Hello, everybody! My name is Chroma, and I am what I would consider to be an expert when it comes to Pokemon Nuzlocks. I've been doing this for about 10 years now, and I specialize in the Nuzlocke variant, the Wedlock, which is the most difficult kind of Nuzlocke that there is that is also balanced, of course. And if you think a hardcore Nuzlocke is difficult, Wait until you see what a hardcore wedlock is like. That's what I do. My Emerald Wedlock is one of my favorite series on the channel to date. I have been doing Pokemon Wedlocks here on YouTube for over five years now, and each and every series that I've done, and there's a lot of them, all have really awesome and incredible moments I'd love to document in a video like this. But the Emerald Wedlock has one of the absolute best. Everybody that's seen it considers it to be one of the most incredible things ever seen in a Nuzlocke challenge. And most of us consider it to be potentially the absolute best of all time. My life motto and one that I apply to great effect when it comes to Pokemon is there is always a route out, which is a catchy way of saying there's always a way out of any situation you might find yourself in, no matter how bad it might look. And that is exactly what this video is about. It is seen in great effect against the eighth and final gym leader of my Pokemon Emerald Hardcore Wedlock against Juan. At this point in my Emerald adventure, I had 11 deaths, and my three pairs consisted of an Azumarill and Altaria, a Machamp and an Absol, and a Kecleon and a Blossom. And the Kecleon and Blossom were added to the team specifically to counter this Juan fight. And they are the subjects of today's video. Now keep in mind, this is a wedlock challenge, so it's different than a Nuzlocke. That means these Pokemon cannot be deposited into the PC and withdraw others to fight Juan with. I have to do it with these six. And in a wedlock challenge, the pair that you lead with has to do the fight together or die trying. You can't switch out to another pair until those two are dead or until you beat the battle. So with only two Pokemon to be a very tough fight, Strategizing can be quite interesting. I also personally do not look up any battles beforehand to give me a refresher, because obviously I've played these games many, many times. And I also don't use damage calculators, because personally, I find that to be cheating. I think anybody can type numbers into a calculator. You have to use your skills and knowledge as a trainer to win the battle, and if I can't win the battle based on those things alone. I didn't deserve to win in the first place. So I think it's time to show you guys why you should never give up in life or in a Pokemon battle or anything. There is always a route out. Time to see how my Blossom Duke and my Kecleon Tortoise managed to overcome Juan when things looked grim. My Kecleon Tortoise is the female of this pair, and Duke is the male. So knowing Juan leads with his love disc and has to move attract, I developed my strategy around Tortoise paving the path for victory for her partner Duke the Blossom. I taught Tortoise Sunny Day, two electric attacks in Thunderbolt and Thunder, and Substitute. On the first turn, I have Tortoise use the move Sunny Day and knock it out with Thunderbolt the following turn. This was so Duke could come in the next turn and use the move Solar Beam inside the Strong Sunlight, and his ability being Chlorophyll makes him faster than everything Juan has. This easily takes care of Whiskash and Celio, but only does half to Kingdra. And this is where things start to go downhill very quickly. I miscounted the Sun turns, and it drops here. I didn't want to risk the chance of a critical hit from Ice Beam, so I go into my backup plan and switch for Tortoise. It completely removes all of the work Duke did with Rest, and wakes up immediately thanks to its Chesto Berry. And then it starts to use Double Team, and continues to use Double Team over and over and over and over until it is at the max evasion with plus six. This effectively gives me a 33% chance to hit every single turn when using 100% accurate moves. And considering he has healing items and the move rest, this looks very, very bad. However, my Blossom has Magical Leaf, but with Kingdra's Ice Beam, I can't get him into the battle safely. Knowing Ice Beam only has 10 power points, if I can use Tortoise's Substitute combined with her ability Color Change, making her a water type, I should be able to stall enough turns to take a chunk out of Kingdra's power points. We're not doing enough damage before it wakes up from rest, making it immediately rest again over and over and over. So while it's hard to hit, any damage we do get off doesn't stick around for very long. While I'm not allowed to use items in battle, I am allowed to use moves to heal my Pokemon, such as Duke having the move Moonlight. But I don't feel safe sending him out, knowing Kingdra still has Ice Beam. At this point, one of the most logical moves to make 
was to let Tortoise die so Duke could get a free switch in. Don't give up hope yet. Duke can heal. The sun is up. Don't give up hope. Don't give up hope! What am I talking about? I'm not like this! I was about to throw in the towel for Tortoise, but there's a route out! The sun is up! Tortoise, this is risky. The thing is, I was about to give in the towel because I know if I switch into Duke, they could just both die. I understand that. Ice Beam has 10 power points. We know this. Two of our Pokemon have it. Three of our Pokemon have it. It has 10 power points. Meaning. It's, it could be close to out. I don't think it's out yet. It's likely Duke dies to an Ice Beam. I get this. But should Duke live, I can heal with Moonlight. And because the sun is up, Moonlight will heal a lot of health. I'm going to take this risk. They're either going to win together or die together. I was about to let Tortoise die to give Duke a chance to get out, but forget that. I'm making risks because you need to make big moves to win the game. All right, Tortoise, get back. Let's go for this, Duke. But I'm just not that kind of player. I want them both to win. They either win together or they die together, even if it does cost both of their lives. So I sit and think and come up with a plan. I eventually decide to send Duke out. And Kingdra used Water Pulse on the switch in, activating his Citrus Berry. Magic Leaf doesn't do anywhere near enough, and one more Ice Beam gets used up. I heal this off with Moonlight, thanks to the sun making us faster, and it uses up another Ice Beam. I haven't been counting at this point, but there's nothing I can do except use the final turn of sun and heal Duke with Moonlight once more. It uses Ice Beam once again as the sunlight fades, but then, the next turn, it uses rest. This very likely means in my mind that he's out of Ice Beam, giving us a path to victory if we can last just a little while longer. I have Duke Moonlight one more time just to make sure, and it once again uses rest. This confirms it. Kingdra has no PP left for Ice Beam. Letting Tortoise die wasn't necessary, and I took that risk because I don't ever give up, but Things don't end there. There's still a big problem. Magical Leaf also has limited power points, and it takes three to four to take Kingdra out. By the time it wakes up, it'll just immediately heal again with rest. We go through every single one, and with Solar Beam and Giga Drain being unable to hit, it's far from over. It eventually does run out of rest, leaving it only with Water Pulse. But Duke also runs out of moves, leaving him with only Solar Beam. And with the sun not up, they take two turns. A 33% chance to connect. And Water Pulse confuses him. He's at half health, Tortoise is near death, and with only five Solar Beam power points to his name, while confused, I once again feel it might be time for Tortoise to give her life for her partner. Dude, Tortoise might take a Water Pulse, but he's not gonna outspeed. She's not gonna outspeed, it's over, guys. Uh... <sighs> I can't believe it came down to this. I can't believe it went this well at the end after I made all those plays and it just comes down to this. I've never seen anything like this. I can't believe this. I'm trying to think long-term with these two right now. Duke is going to die if he doesn't hit. It's plus six evasiveness. Solar Beam is going to miss. Let's just be real. And he could hurt himself. If there's any chance that these two make it out alive, I have to switch into Tortoise and then switch back to Duke. <laughs> and that's ridiculous, I understand. But if I did that and Tortoise lived... But like I've said, I'm stubborn. I will not have that. There is one ace still up my sleeve. Tortoise still has one use of Sunny Day. Kecleon has incredible special defense, and with me knowing Kingdra can only use Water Pulse, I put faith in Tortoise and I send her into battle. Water Pulse hits, taking Tortoise down from 38 HP to 14, but her ability gives them both one final chance to make this happen. It did over half of her remaining HP, but... It also made her a water type, thanks to color change, meaning she can take one more hit. <laughs> now this is going to sound ridiculous. I now have to set up Sunny Day. <laughs> God, this fight can't get weirder. We're resistant now. Unless it crits me or confuses me, 
I'm I have to make this play! I have to! Yeah? That makes Solar Beam one turn now. And Water Pulse is weaker. Holy crap! The plays! Alright! Tortoise! Get back! She needed to summon the sun. This gives Duke four more turns to hit with Solar Beam, weakening Water Pulse and making it so he can fire them off in a single turn. And I switch out for Duke once again. He doesn't get confused, and I have him try for Solar Beam. It misses. I feel everything I've done slipping out of my hands. Oh, oh every turn is a nightmare. Yeah! Joke! Joke! Oh my god! And Vokingdra fainted. And with the sunlight still shining bright, thanks to Tortoise, one final solar beam ends this half an hour struggle with Juan in Zootopolis City. Not a single item was used. Two Pokemon by themselves escaped certain death. And this right here is why you never give up, no matter how bad it might look. There's always a route out. That's for the 11 Pokemon that have died, and I will vow here and now that not another soul will drop. We're making it to the Elite Four with these six. And I'll stand by that for the rest of this adventure. Duke and Tortoise just performed in the most insane fight that has ever been recorded in the history of Pokemon in its entirety. There has never been a battle more insane and more down to the wire. We have defeated Juan. So I really hope you guys enjoyed that little highlight from one of my favorite moments in the channel's history. I know I love looking back at it, and this is a really cool way to hopefully showcase it to new people who didn't see the series back when it initially aired. So with that being said, if you did really like it, it would mean the world to me if you left a quick like on it down below and left me a comment telling me what you thought. And if you've been on the channel for a long time and you want to see other highlights just like this broken down into a video like this, that'd be awesome. I'm very open to it because I'd love to be able to share these moments with other people who didn't watch the series, like I said. So if you have any of those moments, let me know down below or over on my Discord server. I'd love to do this again sometime if you guys liked it, so definitely let me know. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed, like I said, and I'll see you guys next time, hopefully, for some more Nuzlocke content. Until then, I'll see you guys then. Thank you so much for watching.